we can jump, jump into the middle with some up-to-date satellite images. But before, as usual, you can mark your places where you are joining to this session today and maybe watching the clouds. So please uh, put a mark somewhere to the map. Yeah, Croatia. Ivona from Poland, from Serbia, I guess. From Germany, Oslo, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Edinburgh, Carolina. Maybe somebody from, yeah, yeah, from Czech Republic and Ankara. Okay, so we, we have quite many with uh, different kind of uh, region. Uh, so I am very happy. So uh, this infrared image uh, is just uh, uh, two hours ago. And maybe the most interesting uh, cloud phenomena is uh, the thunder clouds, the mesoscale convective system over the North uh, Sea and, uh, and uh, over North uh, Western part of uh, northeastern part of uh, uh, France and Belgium, and if we check the uh, cloud top temperature, maybe also it is interesting over Iceland. So let's move to to the high resolution infrared uh, image. And uh, can I ask uh, for you, you should mark the, the two main cold airness uh, over Europe with this map. Just for some, some star or mark, where is the cold airness over Europe in this picture? Exactly, exactly. One of the Hermes is in here, and the other one, and the other one is, uh, of course, in here. And, okay, I will delete it, clear all annotation, and please mark the thunderclouds um, at this image. So some of the thunderclouds cluster, yeah, over the North Sea, Belgium. Also, there are some lightnings in Poland over some isolated thunderclouds uh, over, over the Alps and maybe somewhere else. What about the northern part of Europe? Maybe those are shallower uh, thunderclouds, but there are still some lightnings. It is over, over here. But we, I can show you the Blitzortum map, so you can see also the lightnings uh, uh, in the north eastern part uh, of Europe. So it is the day microphysical picture, and if we can zoom in mm, to the picture, and uh, it is. Uh, that is uh, in the morning. Of course, we can see very well this thunder, thunderstorm cluster with some orange color, which means uh, that uh, uh, these developments are quite fresh. And can you mark a supercooled uh, middle level cloud in this picture, which, is, which can be interesting and eye catching? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And also we can see uh, the transition from water to ice uh, in here. I checked the infrared image and the temperature was uh, minus 30 degrees Celsius. So it is the 
uh, 24-hour microphysical image? Can you mark some Hermes boundary with uh, high gradient of uh, moisture in the lower level and middle level of the troposphere? Exactly. Exactly. So, so here uh, we can see a drier Hermes and here is much uh, warmer with uh, higher moisture content. And also with some other part, maybe, maybe also here we can see a boundary here. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit uh, above Hungary in here. It is the water vapor image, but also overlaid the infrared. Yeah, sorry for the shift, uh, shifting of the map. It is the water vapor. Uh, can you guess where are, maybe it's not an easy question, but where are the jet axis in this situation? It is today morning. Of course, there are more than one region. Yeah, some 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 more maybe. What about close to Iceland and Ireland? So yeah, Ex uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and also this flank, I think, and here. Okay, thank you. We will we will check it. I think so. It is the three hundred hectopascal uh, airstream, and uh, and uh, I think I show you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is the wind speed uh, at the three hundred hectopascal. So uh, it is a subtropical mm, jet stream and a stronger. Uh, airstream is uh, over here and here and also maybe maybe here but we should go back because yeah so it is simply the infrared image and uh, can you find the leak cloud cloudiness it's a huge uh, uh, cloud shield with very cold cloud top not that Called, uh, that can be seen over the North Sea, but uh, but the coldest, uh, yeah, exactly. It is over Iceland. Uh, I just uh, produced this image uh, with the minimum temperature, or uh, yeah, the minimum infrared temperature over the last uh, one day, and uh, we can see the thunder clouds tracks in uh, uh, over western part of Europe and also over the Black Sea. Mm, I am not sure that it was just frontal cloudiness or, or thunder clouds and also the lee cloudiness uh, uh, over Iceland. And uh, if we zoom in to Iceland, uh, we can see also the phone gap over Iceland and uh, the cloud shield, of course, and uh, the infrared image. Uh, in the infrared image, we also can see the gap and the cold uh, temperatures uh, uh, with a very strong southerly airstream. Yeah, we can. Uh, actually, one of the <laughs> uh, one of the idea of this weather briefing is to practice the conceptual models. Uh, we have many conceptual models and uh, a lot of uh, key parameters uh, to check in, which is not easy, <laughs> I guess. So, um, actually, during the presentation or at at the end of the presentation, um, any of you have some uh, idea, you can raise a question or pick up an interesting cloud feature from today's uh, uh, satellite images and, and we can try 
to check in more detail uh, with my uh, desktop. I can share my desktop with the visualization system if we have time. But uh, uh, unfortunately, we don't have time <laughs> to, uh, to check uh, many um, features, which, is, which is can be can, uh, a lot of, uh, it can be uh, quite time consuming. But anyway, yeah, it is the vorticity field uh, in the upper level at 300 hectopascal. Mm, and we can see a very strong trough uh, in the vorticity field. Uh, it is the axis of the ridge here somewhere. And uh, there is a short uh, trough over here. So maybe over the Alps, uh, the thunder clouds is not only because of the mountain, but, uh, but also because of this uh, uh, moving short wave uh, trough. Yeah, it is the vorticity advection. It's always interesting to check uh, next to the vorticity what the vorticity advection, for example, over the arch, the axis is here, and the advection is just on the eastern flank of it. And also, uh, uh, the thunderstorm cluster in here just situated uh, at this uh, short wave trough, and the vorticity advection is here. So it is simply the 500 hectopascal temperature and uh, wind field. It is the wind field. We can, you can see that uh, over France and Spain, we have also, uh, we can also uh, have uh, wind shear as well because of uh, the wind speed is more than 15 meter per second. And uh, Along this trajectory or streamline, uh, it's an isentrope level, 315 Kelvin, and you can see the pressure. For example, here over Spain, uh, the streamline started at uh, 600 hectopascal and arrived um, over the North Sea to 500 hectopascal. So, so along this track. It's, it's, uh, uh, there is an ascending uh, motion. And also we have uh, quite a lot of fuel for thunderstorm develop, development because of the high uh, equivalent uh, temperature at 850 hectopascal. Also over the Black Sea, there are huge uh, vayus. is the relative humidity. It's a mean value of relative humidity. Mm, over Spain and the southern Mediterranean, it's uh, quite dry, but over France, uh, it can be above uh, 60 mm, uh, percent relative humidity. It's simply the, the temperature. So in here, it's a southwesterly uh, airstream with uh, quite hot air. So next to the uh, uh, moisture and high temperature, we also have high lapse rate in this uh, southwesterly airstream. And we can see the convective available potential energy uh, from the GFS. Uh, EPS uh, median value. So we can have a maximum over Belgium in the morning, and also we have a maximum over uh, here in the west part of the Mediterranean. But as you can see uh, earlier, there are no thunder clouds. And if we check the reason why why it is uh, that, so why we have high value of instability 
over here, but uh, no thunder clouds. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I switched. Mm. So this belong, belongs here. It's Palma de Mallorca. And you can see very dry air uh, in the lower, mm, at about uh, two kilometer. So that is why we, we cannot have uh, thunder clouds. Maybe some, some upper level uh, uh, convection uh, can develop, but, but no thunder clouds. And this corresponds mm, to, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think, uh, uh, this radius and measurements come from uh, northern uh, France here from somewhere. And it is no problem with the uh, humidity. Yeah, it's the precipitable water. The highest uh, amount of precipitable water is above the Black Sea. It's above 40 millimeter. And yesterday morning, the maximum was over here in Istanbul, close to Istanbul. Yeah. And uh, some flooding happened. So uh, I ju just checked the news and and uh, there was some interesting uh, picture with water <laughs> uh, under the ground uh, on the metro in uh, Istanbul. And it is the thunder clouds uh, cluster um, uh, in that morning, uh, very early in the morning or, or during the night, actually. And it is in the morning uh, yesterday. So this cluster of uh, thunder clouds produced uh, the flash flooding in Istanbul. Oh, you can see also the Istanbul uh, radio sound measurements yesterday, zero UTC. So uh, below five kilometer, it's, it's quite uh, uh, saturated. We can jump uh, a small case study. It happened 10 days ago in Hungary. We had a, a serious, uh, severe downburst at the Lake Balaton. It was uh, the highest uh, uh, wind gust measurement was 157 kilometer per hour. And you can see the water vapor image with the infrared image uh, at the late afternoon in that day. So above Hungary, there are not so much uh, thunder clouds at that moment, but, uh, but a thunder clouds initiated in uh, Croatia, in the north part of Croatia, and it goes uh, to the northeast. And uh, the interesting thing maybe that the air was very dry from southwest. So it could be one reason that uh, uh, the very dry air mass and, and the evaporation cooling was one of the factors that uh, huge uh, uh, gust uh, in Hungary uh, and close to Lake Balaton. So that picture was uh, late afternoon, early evening, and yeah, two hours later, here you can see that uh, thunder cloud. And it is the infrared image. And you can see the picture of the um, thunder clouds which were coming from the southwest. And when it arrived to Lake Balaton, it caused uh, a really Mm, severe uh, downburst with the highest uh, uh, wind gust uh, at the eastern part of uh, Lake Balaton. And there, was, mm, there were many falling trees, some people uh, even injured, uh, and it, it was the highest uh, convective wind gust uh, measured uh, I have ever seen.
in Hungary. You can we can check some uh, uh, high resolution image. So in the late afternoon at Lake Balaton there are nothing, but the thunder clouds just initiated uh, over here. Yeah, so it is it is the first thunder cloud. It's one hour later and uh, one and a half hour later it is just in here. Yeah, it is some, just some uh, weather charts uh, about downdraft uh, cape and uh, uh, wind gust potential uh, with dew point depression and uh, uh, the data um, equivalent potential uh, temperature. And along this uh, uh, place in Hungary, in the western part of Hungary, uh, there was quite a lot of uh, downdraft down uh, cape and also we had a uh, wind shear so supercell uh, and also the dry uh, airstream uh, could be the reason of uh, this high wind gust. We can just uh, jump to completely other topic um, aerosols and fires and, uh, and uh, saharan dust so this is the dust aerosol optical depth today morning. With the southwesterly airstream, uh, we can see a plume over France and Spain. And if we check uh, not the dust aerosol, but uh, bio biomass burning aerosols, which come from fires, uh, we can see very well the Croatian coast and also also over Spain and uh, Portugal. And uh, this picture uh, I, I took yesterday evening from my kitchen window. And uh, yeah, um, you can see the dirty air uh, uh, in the sky, which could be also dust and also uh, smoke from forest fires from southern uh, Europe. Um, not only the, the um, uh, camera pictures, but this also on the satellite images, sometimes when the sun angle is very low, so typically in the morning, we can distinguish uh, uh, dirty air stripes uh, on the satellite image. It, it is not today morning, but uh, some days ago, but uh, it's quite usual. It is the today morning mm, uh, natural uh, composite image and we can see some uh, smoke in here mm, with, the, with the greenish hue and the Saharan dust is, is here. Maybe it's more pronounced and also the boundary can be very well seen. Also, if you check uh, the nighttime microphysical image in which we have uh, the 3.9 channel <coughs> included, so there are some spots of fire over Croatia and uh, south part of uh, Italy, which means uh, fires. Uh, this image just show a plume, uh, it just a modeled plume from, from if I initiated from Saturday evening, uh, uh, the smoke uh, moved southward. But uh, I think Marco will have uh, uh, much more detail uh, about the Croatian uh, fires event. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cornell, for this interesting presentation. Uh, so we have some questions here, but I, I would suggest that we leave the questions for the end. We'll switch now to sharing my desktop, just a second.
So here we go. Uh, as I told you at the beginning, uh, and as you probably have seen in the last uh, days, maybe on the news or somewhere else on the internet, uh, there have been a lot of fires raging in uh, Croatia and Montenegro. The reason for these fires uh, is most probably the synoptic situation that occurred in the last few days, almost the last week. Uh, as we see on this picture, uh, a high pressure system was situated on the western slope, the western side of Europe, and uh, a low level, low level pressure was situated over Turkey. And in that situation, a high pressure, high uh, pressure gradients have developed over uh, Adriatic Sea and caused uh, the Bora effect, actually the Bora wind. Uh, some of you probably know what, actually I believe most of you probably know what Bora is. Bora is a rather dry, gusty wind that blows uh, on the Adriatic Sea and almost the whole coast of Croatia and Montenegro was affected by the wind in this period while the high pressure and low pressure system were situated like this. So this, yes, this picture was from Monday 17th of July at 6 UTC. You can clearly see the uh, gradients of the pressure along the coast here. And the next image is from 12 UTC at about the time where, when the fires were uh, at the peak of their activity. Also, you can see the high gradients over here, over the coast of Croatia and Montenegro. Uh, a short look at the synoptic chart. Uh, you can see, as I told you, uh, Bora is a really dry and gusty wind. Uh, we don't see the gusts here at this chart, actually, but we can see how dry the air is from this, this Bora wind. Here in Shibenik, we can see that the air temperature was 31 degrees on Monday afternoon, where uh, when the uh, dew point temperature was only 6 degrees. Also, split 30 degrees, dew point 6 degrees. Makarska 31 degrees, dew point only 5 degrees. And we have the situation at 16 UTC. So this this can show you how dry this Bora wind is and actually the effect of it, this dryness uh, of the wind is uh, drying of the vegetation and drying of the ground of the area where it blows. So in that situation only a little spark or uh, let's say human effect uh, can make well pretty, uh, can make a great damage to the area as you will see in the next slides. On this image you can see the uh, fires that are spreading around split and practical and actually all the images you'll see are the images around split and uh, this is from Monday afternoon when the Bora was still blowing and the fire was practically uh, blown away from one point to another and the firemen had a lot of job to do and a lot of work to do and they uh, worked all the night to extinguish the fires around the split around split this is the smoke from the nearby hills uh easter up to the east of split and this, this is the picture from the suburbs of split where the, where fire already entered fortunately uh, there were no direct casualties to these fires. A uh, few buildings burned down, but uh, no lives were taken by the fire. Uh, as I heard on the news, some indirect lives were taken because some people 
uh, had uh, heart strokes or something like that, unfortunately, but no direct victims. Uh, these fires were really big and they were on a large area and because of that they can be seen also from space. This is a this is an image uh, from Terra satellite from 16th of July, that's Sunday. Uh, already here you can see some fires going on uh, east of Split, some fires in the inland of Dalmatia and some fires going on in Bosnia. This is the 17th of July and we can see a large area uh, southeast of Split is burning and this huge smoke plume is uh, going uh, towards Italy being blown by Bora. Also some fires northeast, northwest of Šibenik and a big fire at the Bay of Kotor. This is a Swami MPP satellite nighttime imagery. Uh, 17th of July at night, we can still see uh, this spot southeast of Split. The fires are raging and we can see the illumination of them. Also, the fire northwest of Šibenik is here. It can be clearly seen from this image. And the fires at the Bay of Kotor, I am not sure if these are still fires, but uh, it seems pretty illuminated, so I assume there still is some fire at that area. Uh, I have prepared some loops. This is an HRV uh, channel loop. On it, you can see from the morning of 17th of July, how the smoke spread uh, across the Adriatic Sea and how the, f the fires actually uh, grew over time. You can see fires north of Šibenik, east of Split and at the Bay of Kotor. Another loop I made, it's the 3.9 micrometer channel from the MSG satellite. In it, it can be really nice seeing the uh, high temperature of the area around uh, the fires that have been going on north of Šibenik, around Split, practically all the area southeast of Split is black in this uh, image that shows us that temperatures are, are really high at that area. And of course, also, also actually we can see some other fires in this area, some here in Bosnia, some in Italy, and at Bay of Kotor. Another image prepared by a colleague of mine, Ivan Smiljanic. Uh, this is the natural color RGB that is a little bit enhanced so the smoke can be seen uh, much better than in the original RGB. Also, you can see here the three large fires that occurred on the coast. And yeah, actually that would be all from me. And if, if now if you have any questions, please you, please you can uh, write in the chat box or raise your hand.